Hi everyone. I'm here in predimed.r, for which you'll also need the corresponding data file predimed.csv. And in this walkthrough, we're going to address a couple questions. Number one, substantively speaking, does it seem as though the Mediterranean diet has a protective effect for cardiac health? And number two, we're going to think about the question of how to analyze data from a randomized controlled trial, a very common type of study design in medicine and public health. So first things first, let's load a few libraries here. We've got the Tidyverse, ggplot2, and Mosaic. And it's good to load them in that order, otherwise there could be some unintended errors that come up. So let's load those up. Next thing is, let's read in the data set. Again, it's in predimed.csv, which you'll no doubt find on your class website. I'm going to come over here to the Import Data Set button, pick that first option from text base, and read it in here from my data directory. Scroll on down, and here it is, predimed.csv. So the word predimed here, uh, it uh, is a Spanish term, and it comes from a large randomized controlled trial run in Spain and Portugal about the effect of the Mediterranean diet on the likelihood that someone is going to experience some kind of adverse cardiac event. Think a heart attack here. So every row in this data set is a single participant in this randomized controlled trial. We've got a lot of information about them, what group they were in, whether they were in the control group, which is kind of like an ordinary Western diet, or whether they are in one of two branches of the experimental group, a Mediterranean diet with virgin olive oil supplements or a Mediterranean diet with nuts as a supplement. Uh, let's make sure we go through our checklist here. We notice that R isn't recognizing the header row here, so let's make sure and come back and click that yes button right there. Everything looks good. Every row of patient, every column, something about that patient, that participant in the clinical trial, and uh, let's go ahead and import this. All right, now the two variables that we're going to be interested in here are which group was the trial participant in? And again, it was the flip of a coin, the roll of a dice that determined whether somebody was in the control group or one of the two versions of the Mediterranean diet on here. So a true randomized controlled trial where you don't have to worry too much about confounding. That's going to be the, the variable that's driving uh, the, the variation here. As far as the outcome, we're interested in this uh, column out here, way at the end, called event. And event equals yes means that that participant experienced some type of cardiac event. There's a long list of possible cardiac events, but really you should just think of this as a heart attack. And no means that they didn't. And the no's, thankfully, far outnumber the yeses. They follow up these patients for many, many years, I think like four or five years on average. And so we're getting a sense of whether the frequency of yeses and no's of whether somebody experienced this event is related to what diet they were following throughout the randomized controlled trial. Okay, so that's the background here. Let's head back into the script. Again, that's our key question. Do those randomized to the Mediterranean diet experience cardiac events at a lower rate? One important data pre-processing step here is going to be to take that Mediterranean diet variable, which if you recall, let's just look at those first six lines of the data set again. There's actually three arms of this trial. There's a control group and two different versions of the Mediterranean diet. For the standpoint of this analysis, we're really focused on collapsing those two versions of the Mediterranean diet, whether it had virgin olive oil supplements or nuts as a supplement, into a single arm that we just want to call something like, I don't know, med diet any, whether on the, either of these two arms. So that's exactly what we're going to do here in this data preprocessing step. We're going to use the tidy versus mutate function. We're going to take the PREDIMED data set and define a new variable that I'll just call med diet any. And that will take the if-else function right here. So this if-else function works very similar to the function of the same name in Excel, if you've ever seen that before. Uh, it has three things uh, that, it, uh, that it needs. It performs a true-false test on every single item in the data set. The true-false test here that we'll set up is whether somebody is in the control group or not. So this double equal sign is a test for equality. We are testing whether their group was equal to the control. If the answer is true, we'll give them a label called control. And if the label was false, we'll give them this new label called med diet any, because if this answer to this true false question is false, that means they must have been either in this arm, Mediterranean diet plus olive oil, or this arm, Mediterranean diet plus, nut, plus nuts. All right, so let's execute line 2324 right here by hitting control enter. And what you'll notice here is that this med diet any now functions as just any ordinary variable as if it was there from the beginning. 
So let's just, in the standpoint of exploratory data analysis here, make a table. We'll use X tabs to tabulate every patient, every participant in this trial according to whether or not they experienced a cardiac event, yes or no, and whether they were on the control diet or any form of the Mediterranean diet, again, that new variable that we defined up here on line 23 and 24. That's a table of counts. It's probably a little bit more informative to turn this into a table of proportions by conditioning on this column variable. That's margin equals two, right? To ask, well, let's look at this proportions of yes, no, uh, did you experience a heart attack? Conditioning on whether you had a controlled diet or a Mediterranean diet. So that's what we're doing here on line 30 and 31. And you notice there is some suggestion in the data set of a lower rate of cardiac events, 3.6% for those on any form of Mediterranean diet, versus like 4.7, 4.8% rate of experiencing cardiac events for those on the control diet. So kind of the provisional or preliminary answer to our question is, well, yes, it does seem that the Mediterranean diet has a protective effect. 4.8% chance of a heart attack on the control diet, 3.6% chance of a heart attack on the Mediterranean diet. But the really important question is here, what about uncertainty? Right? What can we say in light of the fact that we don't have everybody in Spain or everybody in the world participating in this clinical trial? We only have a few thousand people, you know, on the order of about 6,000 plus people right here. So you know, we have this interpretation that in absolute terms, those in the Mediterranean diet are experiencing cardiac events less often. In fact, that difference there is about 1.1%. And we could use the diff prop function to tell us that. Just say, hey, what's the difference in proportions for event by the different levels of the Mediterranean diet variable, and we find, well, there it is, 1.1%, 0.011 and change difference in proportions right here. But we have to take an account of uncertainty here and ask the question up to statistical levels of certainty, is this difference real or could it have simply been a small sample difference due to uh, just the fact that we don't have everybody in the sample and only a sample of people? So. That's where we move to step two here. We're gonna bootstrap this difference of proportions as a way of answering our question at a, a level of statistical certainty other than, uh, than just saying, well, we think it's different on, in light of the data. That's what line 41 is doing. We're taking that difference of proportions, that diff prop, and we're repeatedly recalculating it, not for our original sample, but for a thousand different bootstrapped samples. That is samples with replacement from our original sample of the same size as the original sample. So we run this line and we are effectively approximating the sampling distribution of this coefficient. If we were to take a different sample of patients and put them in our trial, this is what we think uh, the, uh, the difference in proportions would have been uh, simulating that process. So in this new object that we've created on line 41 called PREDIMED boot, there's only one column. As I see here by executing line 43, that column is called diff prop. And you're noticing that you know most of these numbers are positive, right? There's not a lot of negative numbers here across six different bootstrap samples. What about all, across all 1,000 bootstrap samples? Let's use ggplot here, specifically a histogram, to inspect this bootstrap sampling distribution. So let's I guess, execute lines 46 and 47. Here's our sampling distribution over here. And now what can we take away from this? It looks like the bulk of the probability over here of this sampling distribution is kind of between, I don't know, just eyeballing a confidence interval somewhere about here to somewhere about here. So maybe a, a tenth or a few tenths of a percentage points all the way out here to something like two or two and a half percentage points difference. That's the scale that we're talking about here. And importantly, there's very little of this probability distribution that's over here less than zero. If we want to make this a little bit more formal, let's actually ask R to give us a 95% confidence interval, which is to say, find us the middle 95% of this probability distribution right here. That's what we're doing on line 50 with the confint function. So I'll put my cursor there, hit command enter, and you notice I get a confidence interval that's from here on the lower end to here on the upper end. And that really, that set of numbers right there is the really the the set of numbers that gives you the take home lesson from this example right here. Let's phrase it in statistical terms first and then phrase it in substantive terms. Statistically speaking, what these numbers are telling us here is that we're 95% confident or kind of equivalently at the like the 5% level if you want to think about this as a, a hypothesis test. We are confident, I should say, at the 95% level that this difference in proportions between the control patients 
and those taking the Mediterranean diet is not zero. And to be a little bit more specific, it's likely somewhere between about 0.001, that's a tenth of a percent, and 2.2, that's 2.2 percentage points right there. Okay, so that's, that's uh, if you kind of think about that as a, a baseline risk coming back up to this table up here, the baseline risk was about 4.8%. So a 2.2% reduction is, is fairly large there. So our, now that's our statistical conclusion. The 95% confidence interval for our difference of proportions is that number there to that number there. In substantive terms, since this is a randomized controlled trial and we don't have to worry about confounding, we would probably conclude that the Mediterranean diet has a protective cardiac effect. It reduces your chance of getting a heart attack. That effect, however, could be small, right? Maybe something like a tenth of a percent reduction in risk versus a baseline risk of 4.8%. Or it could be large, maybe like a 2.2% reduction in risk versus that same baseline of 4.8, which is uh, quite a large effect, nearly halving your risk versus that 4.8% figure. So there you have it. We've analyzed the data from this experiment by computing a difference in proportions between two groups, the Mediterranean diet group and the control group. We found that that difference in proportions, well, we think it's about 1.1% from our data, but we're not sure. In light of statistical uncertainty, it could be between about those two numbers. The lower end of that scale represents a, a non-zero but small effect. The upper end of that scale represents quite a large substantial effect, moving from 4.8% down by a factor of about 2.2%. So that's the entire picture here. We were fairly confident at the 95% level that there is an effect, but we're not sure whether it's small or large. And that is what bootstrapping gets you on a problem like this.